thank you very much, Amadeo. Uh, so uh, we can start. Um, so it's my honor to introduce uh, architect uh, Mauricio Cardenas La Verde. Uh, he has a PhD on sustainable design at Politecnico di Milano uh, uh, um, Architecture School. And uh, he's professor for the masters uh, on uh, environment design of Politecnico di Milano and Tongji University in Shanghai. Um, during his career, he worked at top level international practices uh, such as uh, Meiji Watanabe and Associates in Tokyo, Renzo Piano Building Workshop in Paris, uh, and he was leader of Arup Facade Engineering Team in Milan. Uh, in 2004, Mauricio founded the Studio Cardenas Conscious Design in Milan, a creative architecture workshop leader in innovation, design and construction with sustainable material, mainly with bamboo. And uh, since 2017, Mauricio is one of the bamboo experts of the Task Force for International Bamboo and Rat Organization, INBAR, and scientific curator for 2019 and 2020 under the Bamboo Tree event for the Labirinto dell'Amazone, I don't know if it's the right, the right pronunciation, largest bamboo labyrinth in the world. Uh, in 2019, Studio Cardenas Conscious Design was awarded uh, by UK Build Architecture Awards for Best International Sustainable Architecture Practice, um, and Italy and Build Distinction Award for Conscious Design. So the title of his talk today is uh, Bamboo, a Strategic uh, Natural Resource for Shell and Spatial Structures. And uh, please, uh, Mauricio, you can start sharing your screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Oh, great. OK. Thank you very much for the introduction, Andrea. So uh, well, yes, I am passionate about bamboo for different reasons uh, that I will explain you uh, during the lecture. Uh, well, bamboo is a natural strategic resource that is contributing directly to at least six of the sustainable development goals adopted by United Nations. Um, so this is one of the first reasons. It's a natural material and it's ready to, to be used, you know, and since the construction process is one of the biggest culprits when it, becomes to, when, it, when it comes to global greenhouse emissions, I think we should all take it into account as a, a construction material. If I, if I am not wrong, I remember at least 15 years ago, it was not uh, as, um, a, a normal practice to build with, with wood in Italy, with laminated wood. And it was, so, so it's just a history of 15, 20 years of laminated wood. And we see that how big industry we have today in Italy regarding uh, wood constructions and even the codes and everything. So bamboo is very possibly the next, the next step. And I believe that Italy can be very strong on this for, for various reasons. Of course, with a high quality engineering uh, tradition architectural tradition and also sensitivity of materials because it's believed that bamboo can save the planets it grows in Italy we have we have um, local local um, and very good uh, performance um, how do you say species and for um, so I'm not going to just read but I will just keep on going and showing you some images this is this is the traditional way of construction with with bamboo, which, which I have chosen not to work this way because being in Italy and there's no, we, these kind of constru constructions need um, specialized um, hand, handcraft, people, people that know how to work with this material. And as we don't uh, yet, uh, I've been developing different types of, of construction technologies. So um, until today, basically construction with bamboo is just a, um, um, very interesting and also with beautiful results, but it's an exercise of form, not, not, not of technology. So it's been now 15 years professionally because I know bamboo since I was a kid. And um, due to my origins, I'm Colombian and I, work, I had passed my first years 
of growth playing in, in my grandfather's farm where there was bamboos and we were constructing and using it. And some things come back to your mind whenever you, you don't expect. And that was during my architectural studies. <clears throat> uh, so this came to my mind. Uh, and this is how I've been working for uh, now uh, 15 years. It's putting together uh, industries, no? the, the high tech and the low tech. We know very well how to construct with steel uh, and we don't know how to construct with bamboo. So I started with simple, simple constructions, doing testing myself with the support sometimes of the Politecnico di Milano uh, engineering lab in Lecco, Professor Imperadori, for example, and also in, in, with, with other other supports in, in, in Colombia and in China. I've been testing and doing different kinds of, and, and using my own hands to understand how these systems really work. Um, well, this is what basically what, how my, my company works. Conscious design comes from the PhD research, which I, I understood that, that basically sustainability is a word that can be very differently interpreted, but consciousness or being um, no, el buen senso, no, consapevolezza, uh, consciousness doesn't have much of an interpretation. So I prefer to use conscious, this conscious as a, as a, as a word. And, and I would well like to present you um, a, a three scale of, of building projects so that we have done and the experience with these projects. I'm an architect, have experience with working very uh, gratefully, experiences working with engineers. And um, uh, so you'll see it from an architect point of view, which is very, has, um, uh, so you won't see many charts or calculations, but it's something that we can, we can see sometimes in the future. So th this is the first, uh, the first uh, construction system I did. I started with a very simple structure, but very light. We built it ourselves uh, with the, uh, my students at the time and, and with also the, uh, people working in my office, my small office, and we build it ourselves on the ground and then uh, this way. And then we li was lifted up very simple, uh, simply and in a way safe manner. Also because the, the buildings I showed you at the beginning, most of them are built in, in, in not in, in uh, urban context, but in, in rural context and in, in, in forests, in, in exotic places. So they don't basically follow generally uh, codes, building codes. But my work is following the codes. So this building, this uh, pavilion follows the local codes. I had the support of our team, Maurizio, engineer Maurizio Teora, then, then he was after some years later, he became the director of Arup Italia. Uh, <clears throat> for this, we um, had his support at the time because this is um, actually exp experiments, not real project, which I had a client. I, I had, I did it on my own with my own resources and with the support of companies, lighting companies and uh, other companies like um, Apey, Cine in Arup was one of these companies that support this research. But this research has, uh, I'm showing this to you because it has been developed, developing continuously. And I will show you more complex and, and, and structures, structures like this one, for example, Several years years later, uh, this was already 2009, like three years later, I reused the same bamboo from the other pavilion that had to be dismounted, had to be disassembled because uh, um, the, the, the site before was owned by the city the, by the city um, by the city of Milan, so uh, had to be dismounted and. I decided to cut the bamboo and experiment with a different way. As you see the joints uh, of these projects, the first one is use no perforation of the bamboo, it's just compression and has no cement inside because usually when they perforate, they, they put the, 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 the um, bolts inside, they have to, they have to put, um, they have to put a cement inside, right? So I, I, I'm using bamboo without this type of situation and also to be able to dismount it. So here we see, see a more complex structure also related to Renaissance, Renaissance building at the back. So it's a geodesic, which is basically a 3D uh, um, golden ratio uh, geometry. Geometry is very important. For geometry, probably better than architects, but I'm very interested in, in engineering. So I, I 
and, and and the architects and engineers of the past that actually were both were not engineers or architects were artists architects and engineers in one so i am inspired very much in them and i use i usually use uh, traditional well traditional uh, i don't know if called traditional geometry is uh, very important you can see just with very with form with form uh, the uh, correct geometry can can become very strong so this is what we did with bamboo and this is the connections details and here you can see also the integration to, to make bamboo contemporary, not to keep uh, make bamboo to look uh, for hotels in, in, in exotic places, but to make it look contemporary. And this is a way that, that bamboo can 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 support the, the, the climate change because if it's used in the cities where there's more construction than in the countryside and where pollution has to be controlled, well, uh, this can be a good a, a very positive thing for the future. This is a, just a kind of a um, dream. Why, why not making the bamboo domes for Mr. Elon Musk in, with bamboo structures? Bringing, bringing a primitive plant from, the, from, from, from Earth to, to, to Mars. It's provo 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 provocation, of course. <clears throat> so now we're gonna see a, a, a bigger structure. I was invited to this Biennale a bamboo biennale in China, uh, outskirts of Shanghai. And I was one of the few, the few uh, architects that actually did a, a bearing structure in bamboo. And this is a development of the first structure I, I show you. Here we're going more complex, three-story house with no concrete. Um, I'm not, ha I have nothing against uh, concrete, uh, but I try not to use it uh, uh, very much, just when it's where it is necessary. As we are talking about light structures, uh, uh, to keep it as light as possible, give it the, the necessary weight. And, and so here it's a prefabricated house, so it's contemporary approach, making a, 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 a prefabricated house with bamboo, uh, with uh, uh, aluminum connections, uh, with golden section proportions in plant and, and in section. This gives it a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, statical, um, Possibilities not, not calculating myself, but I when I do the projects, the engineers, Chinese engineers in this case, were surprised that I was very close to the to the final solution. It's a matter of proportions. So using these proportions and not working with contemporary materials, mixing it with natural material, this is basically the achievement. And the last project I would like to show you in the last five minutes of the presentation regards a large scale project. It's a garden, it's a, INBAR is the international organization for bamboo and rattan, and it's a 32 meter span arches. Uh, so as you can see, uh, bamboo can, has a very interesting uh, possibility for making large structures, very light, it's very light. It's a perfect product of nature. So I, I prefer using it naturally. There's laminated bamboo, of course, but, but I, I believe that round pole bamboo, it, it's already, uh, already okay. From the forest, from the forest to the to the construction site is is a poise, a poetry a poetry that inspires me very much. So this is the concept starting from art from an Italian uh, artist Fontana, uh, and cutting the ground and making it become landscape. So landscape uh, architecture and engineering become one. And this is in the uh, expo in in in, um, in Beijing. So not only bamboo is a natural material, but also plants, earth, water, pebbles. And this structure, these were the first sketches for our, uh, from the sketches and the modeling and understanding and playing with form, form finding and, and, and doing it simple. Um, you know, bamboo is complex, uh, complex because it's natural, it's not standard. So uh, it's a big structure, but it's, it's quite simple. It's quite simple as... as um, as slowly, slowly grow, growing, growing up. But here we can see again the golden proportion, and golden proportion is amazing. And it's a question. I, 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 it's a question more than an affirmation. Probably the golden proportion, because when we were, they were bending the bamboo in the site, there was a maximum bending uh, possible, and the maximum possible bending was exactly the the golden proportion bending. So bamboo, it's, already, it's a golden proportion natural uh, element and could be bent maximum as a golden proportion. Coincidence? 
maybe, but I in my my my, my how to say um, my spiritual feeling is that it, but maybe it's a it, 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 philosophical uh, thought is that probably it's true. And these are the these are the sections in bamboo. Since we cannot ask nature to give us a bamboo as big as the sizes we want, as we can ask the steel industry, concrete industry, wood industry, we we have to make it groups and making groups of bamboo. And, and it's kind of more of a, a cable, you know, the, the, the steel cables. It actually works most more as a cable because it's fibers than, than what it, that working as steel. But many architects and engineers still today work it, with it as, as it was um, steel or, 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 or concrete. Here we see some parts of the, uh, of the construction on the left top of the screen. You can see that there's only concrete for the for the supports for the the, the arches as, um, touch the, the the ground, but there's no slab, no concrete slab. It was not necessary. I thought it was. But we calculating and working it. We didn't need to make a concrete slab. Um, so the Imbar Garden Pavilion is 54 meters wide and 40 meters long. Is the largest bamboo uh, arches. Uh, uh, the largest bamboo arches have a span of 32 meters and with a height of nine meters. It's kind of a virindal truss type of arches. Made the it made the structure look also very light. They're light, but they look even lighter. And more than 5,000 Philostachys Puvesins bamboo natural poles were used for the arches. Each pole is about uh, from eight to uh, 10 centimeters diameter and four to six year old age. age. Um, we have Philostachys Puvesins in Italy. It's not originally from Italy, but there are a lot of cultivations nowadays in Italy. The main arches were bent by applying heat to the bamboo poles. A special process transformed the bamboo poles into golden yellow color and it extends its useful life for uh, 30 years, uh, achieving a, useful, a longer useful lifespan than construct, for construction processes. And here we can see some more images of the, of the design, the interiors. They call it the bamboo eye due to this reflection. It's called by the, I call it, I call it the garden pavilion, but public called it bamboo eye. And I thought it was much more nice actually back there. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Maurizio. It's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful uh, work you are doing. I think this is pretty much a state big part of the state of the art uh, on this uh, type, you, the usage of this material. We have three questions. So I will have five minutes. So le let's uh, first, it's Professor Brocato uh, with a question. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Very, very nice, very interesting. And just a very fast question. I saw some times you splice the bamboo. I don't know if this is the right term. Is there an advantage in doing that? I mean, of course, reduce dramatically the the least uh, inertia of the, of the of the for the for the uh, geodesic. I sliced the bamboo for it was more, more for an experimentation, and also for was easier to connect for making the pyramids. I see. Uh, you know, bam bamboo natural bamboo is not very easy to for the connections is difficult because you have to deal with with with, with tubular. And, and connecting tubes like this or like this is difficult or you need a specialized manpower. So usually I do like this. And for the cupola also, I thought it would look more, more elegant. It was just aesthetic and also experiment for me. Then the potentiality of the slices. But you, I agree with you that it takes a lot of, of, of its uh, inertia, yeah, of course. Thank you very much. Okay, then uh, we have uh, Professor Lazaro. Mauricio, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Very much, Mauricio, very inspiring talk. And okay. I have a very specific question. You, sp you spoke about bending of uh, bamboo and the golden yeah. ratio. And yeah. I saw that uh, picture with bent bamboo poles yes. uh, on the ground. Uh, I, I thought that it was elastic bending, but it seems that they are bent and they remain bent. So yes. how is it done? 
Yes, it's it's done. Uh, it's done. There's a possibility to do it by 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 elastic bending, but it's much. You can bend it much less. You can bend it with fire. You apply fire, and and you you do you do like um, in the ground. You did, you draw the curvature you want to achieve, and you put some some uh, ele vertical elements that will keep the bamboo there. And you start bending and bending and bending it slowly, slowly until you achieve it. Okay. But you can you, you cannot go further than that than that bending because it starts it starts a, a cracking. Okay. So from the experiments we did maximum and then we start going backwards until we failed failed safe. I had thought for aesthetical reasons that were that is the golden ratio. Uh, Mauricio, there was a little problem with the connection. Can you repeat the last uh, thing you oh, said? Oh yeah. So uh, so basically. What, what I said is that uh, the bending was done with, with fire. Uh, so slowly, slowly bending the bamboo until you achieve the curve. Uh, we, did the, the, we did the worst case until the bamboo uh, starts breaking. And then we start going back until where we felt safe, that it was the safe, uh, the safest. And the safest curve done with, with, with the heat bending was very close to the golden ratio curves that I had uh, thought from the design process. Okay, thank you very much. That was thank you, Professor. And there is Francesco Marmo. Uh... Yes, thank you. Uh, so I, uh, since when uh, Mauricio sent me the photos to post on the website, I, re I recall everyone that we have a virtual exhibition with the photos of the structures of Mauricio. And uh, I, I got impressed um, by details. So this is one of the cases in which David is in details. But my question is not about details because I, I see that they are very complicated and it is a way to express the art of Mauricio. But my, my question is more technical and regards the durability. And uh, I see also in the, in the chat, there is a question about fire resistance. Um, so both yes. durability and fire resistance. Yes, it has very much to do with the design. And we see that in, 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 in Nervi and Morandi's designs that uh, has to do, and also, um, of course, architectural masters as well, the, the, the durability of the material has very much to do with the design. So it's keeping it protected from, from, from the water, uh, protecting it from the sun, from the UV, UV rays, right? Uh, and also, also of course, of the protection process, but the protection process can be very chemical to make it last longer. I try to use as much natural process and use design for protection joints is that you can, you can change the place. You can replace the bamboos. Uh, even in the house, the three-story house, you can replace the bamboos after, until now it has, it has three years and a half. And nothing has, of course, it's very new. But in the future, they can replace pieces if it's necessary because it, it's dry mounted. Regarding fire, it has to do, of course, uh, also uh, uh, with the sign. For example, the, the big pavilion, we, we used all the electrical system, but also in the small pavilions, the electrical systems are, are never in touch with the, with the pavilion. Also the design of the exits, because uh, when bamboo uh, burns, it, it, it burns, right? It even produce, it also produces a flame. So you have to design the exits. So that's why it's an open space, very freely and easy. We calculated the, the, the exits uh, to be uh, as, fa as fast as the, as the um, uh, Ch Chinese uh, fire uh, protection uh, uh, codes uh, specify. And we also use water. Uh, for example, in, in Expo Milan, I did another structure which I, I didn't show today, um, but in the fire department, because the bamboo was inside of a, a water pool and, the, and we have sprinklers on the top. This gives us the, the amount of time for people. People were walking under the, under the, under the bamboo structure in Expo, uh, uh, as well in, in, in Beijing. But it's just a matter of calculation of time, because if we want bamboo to be natural, uh, there's the, the the risk of, of, of fire, and of, and of, it's a matter of sort of prevention, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so there are more questions in the chat. Uh, we are uh, uh, another five minutes late now at this point, mm -hmm. but uh, Maurizio kept 15 minutes sharp and the question took a little longer. 
and, and so I will, for the next presentation, I will cut in at uh, four minutes and a half, let's say. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so, uh, and then I want to thank once again uh, Mauricio for uh, participating uh, and uh, uh, contributed to the virtual exhibition and uh, it's, uh, it's it's very nice uh, to, to 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 see this work